Oh no, not this soon, Kiana. <laughs> Wait a minute, that is my favorite, one of my favorite songs. So um, I'm, over I'm gonna need you to pre watch that at least five times before we got on live. I did. <laughs> Welcome, I everybody. Did. Thank you for joining us on Inspire. If you all did not get chills or cry like Kiana, then you might want to check your pulse. Because the phenomenal voice that you just witnessed is that of Terry Doctor. She is a singer, songwriter, multi instrument um, music list. That means she plays a lot of instruments and actress. <laughs> so we like she has been uh, her songs have been appeared in various shows. She was on David Talbert's play as a lead character on there. She's done so much, and we want to dive deep into her career and how it's all developed right here on Inspired. So let's uh, welcome right now, Terry Dexter, and and and, and say hello to her and, and get tissue for Kiana. <laughs> hey, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. <laughs> we are, we are so honored to have you. you. Yes. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you, lady. Yes, oh, nice to you. meet you as well. <laughs> I love it. You know, um, it, it made me feel something uh, just because, too, uh, listening to that, because literally, uh, I literally just posted this on Instagram today, uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a flashback. So basically, the co-writer of that song, Just Because, by Anita Baker, um, was one of my great, great friends and mentors, uh, mm -hmm. Samuel Kinney. And I've just been thinking about him a lot lately, and it's really interesting I posted the picture today and I mentioned, you know, I talked about him and, you know, just having this fullness, this, this just thinking about him and, and then what, but, you know, see uh, that you put, you chose to play that song and wow, I just know, like, he's like, Hey, he's just, yes. like, so <laughs> yeah, he's, he passed a few years ago, but he, he co-wrote that song. Mm. Amazing. Mm. And with, I mean, you sing songs like that. I mean, I love you just because like, what is that like? How did, what does that resonate with you? Just singing words like that. Oh well, you know it all started in the church singing mm -hmm. um, uh, as a child growing up in the church. My uncle, Uncle Kenny's church, and I went to Harper Baptist Church. And when you, you know, you sing when you sing um, in church and and inspire and God sings, you know, uses you as a vessel as a musical vessel. You just learn, you know, that your spirit. Um, is honed through that musicality that's in you and you connect with people. So I've always brought that um, in all of my music genres, you know what I'm saying? So it really started in the church, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, we're connecting spiritually as a child to all all kinds of different age people. Like I remember as a child, like looking at my parents, I'm like six years old, looking at my parents cry and, you know, yeah. learning, trying to figure out what's happening. And you quickly learn that singing you know singing god's messages and just connecting with people so yes the, i've i've really carried that through all the music that i sing and that i write you know so you feel it and that's probably why when you when you sing it makes people cry like kiana you know i mean it's definitely 
something that <laughs> the origin, the origin of it definitely brings out that. So I wanted to take a step back and just start out the beginning of the journey. As you stated, you started out singing in church. Tell me about, I guess, the age in which you first belted out a note and you knew that you can sing. Yeah, you know, um, thank you for asking. Um, as long as as far back as I can remember, um, it was you know as a as a child, I, singing was like eating and sleeping. Like I sang all the time, and I didn't really know what was going on. I just knew that it made me feel alive, you know, as a kid. And so the big moment actually was one day. Um, I remember it very vividly. I was like six, seven. And I, my father was watching football and sitting in his chair. And I said, I just decided this day, I'm going to announce that I want to be a singer and I want to sing. <laughs> yeah. And my dad, you know, we're real close to so my father. I remember going, Dad, I want to, I got to, I want to sing for you. And my dad turned off the TV and sat in the chair and he said, You want to sing for me? Okay. And I went right in front of my dad. And I sang, uh, it was I think Whitney Houston? I can't remember what I sang, but I sang, I'm, or maybe it was a song I made up. I used to write all kinds of songs. Um, and I sang for him. My dad that day was like, Mom, to so my mother, get in here, you got to hear her. And I sang again, he said, sing again, I sang again. And then he called my uncle, his brother, immediately that day. And he, he said, get your coat on, get your shoes on. And we got in the car and he took me down to the church that day. And my uncle was at the church and it happened to be choir practice. I'll never forget it. I walked in and the um, music director was there and my uncle, you know, my dad said, Terry sings. And then I walked up in the front of the stage with the choir and the music director. And I remember my dad was like, sing for them. And I sang. And that upcoming Sunday was my first solo in the church. So do you remember was, what you, do you remember the song you sung? Yeah. <laughs> <It was> <laughs> Stand up, sit down, the invocation Bible school. It was like <laughs> it was really? a kid's and then and it was um I remember that uh, we had to do a little routine and it was like <laughs> it was about just celebrating uh Bible school. That was really you know it was like a whole fun uh routine we had with all the kids. But I remember sit, ha, uh city uh walking out and singing in the front, you know what I mean? Like, whoa, you know, I can still remember that. But it was really fun and it was really just um, uh, celebrating, studying the Bible and yeah. um, learning. And there was some scripture in the song, but it was, uh, and also just celebrating the kids. We were just having fun, but I had to sing like the lead of that. So that was the first song was about Bible school. <laughs> I well, remember we so when you sit in front of your father and you're telling him, I'm going to sing, it, it was a shock to him to hear your voice. So was there not other members in your family who shared in the talent that you had that, that made them, they like, oh, one day she's going to be just like that? Um, Yeah, actually. So my auntie, Pat, my auntie Pete, she, uh, she, uh, she's my uncle Kay's wife. So she's a singer. So she would teach me all the songs for church. Um, But also... I didn't know this until later because it's like a, a kind of hidden secret in the family. But my father, actually, um, as I've heard, is an amazing uh, singer and penis. But he just never. My dad's, you know, engineer, and he took care of, you know, it, it was he had to kind of take care of a lot of people, and um, as and then he just kind of decided uh, to kind of shut that light off. As far as I, mm. you can't really shut it off. I think he just realized. I gotta be, I gotta be the man and I'm really, and so what I've heard by all my family, um, that my father is an extraordinary singer and could play. Now, one time, now if I bring it up to my dad, he's all good. I always tease him about it, like, "Dad, you gotta sing." Finally, let it out one day, but he just, you know, he decides not to. He just kind of says, "You sing. That's why you're here," you know. But um, I did catch him one day. So he bought us a piano and I started learning, you know, how to play and my sisters. But one day I came home from school early and I heard this amazing piano playing. And I'm like, who's in the house? You know, playing the piano. <laughs> I, nobody else was home. And my dad didn't know I was coming home. And I snuck in the back and I remember just looking and it was my dad playing the piano from the back. Yeah. I just like stared at him. 
and listened to him for a while. And then I went, dad, I'll not forget it. My dad just kind of turned around and looked at me and smiled. And that was that. We just, we but you know, really it's amazing started. though, to know that, you know, you have, you know, musical families, like, you know, from the Jacksons, just at the top of my head that was pouring into children. Like you got to sing, you got to be the performer and that yeah. your parents were not that way, but you were just constantly yeah. still drawn to it no matter what. So yeah. it's just like inherently in you to become and do that, regardless of the fact that I'm showing you and putting mm -hmm. piano lessons in front of you. So that's so great how just that little bit of glimmer of that information that you saw and mm -hmm. that you knew about him was what gravitated you to wanting to be a singer. Yeah, he was always, my parents were always very supportive. My mm -hmm. mom was like, I would say a stage mom. I mean, okay. uh, I did a lot of recordings as a child, a, huge, a lot of music professionally since I was little. Um, my mother was there every step of the way. My father, but his musicality came out in his direction to me. Mm. So every show I did, my dad was there. And afterwards he would give me notes. Like, <laughs> I love it. Part, you could have done like this, Terry, or try this with your voice here. As a child, I didn't really understand, like, why does my dad know that? Um, but he kind of knew how he would watch my performances and then give me great music notes. You know, I mean, um, just notes he would take. And and I I do I do owe a lot of my growth musically to my father because he always remind. You know, he was always giving me pointers. Try this part. Go up higher. Use your breath here. That part in the song you got to learn. You know, pronounce this word. Like he was just oh, and my father. Uh, also uh, exposed me to a lot of music and artists. He would, mm -hmm. uh, everybody, I mean, my dad has great taste in music and he would always Terry, come in here. I want you to hear this artist. So I would listen mm -hmm. to him and my dad was educating me, you yeah. know? And, and, and he took me to see, I'll never forget it. I was a little girl and my dad took me to see Stephanie Mills. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was a little kid in there and, and my dad was like, watch her. <laughs> watch her perform. I want to see Tony Braxton. My dad told me uh, uh, Whitney Houston. Um, I mean, like jazz artists as a child, you know? Yeah. And, and even, you know, even my dad once took a Shania Twain, too. Really? You know? Yes. She was um, performing at a fair. This is like way back. And and my dad was like, there's this country singer that could, it's good. I want you to watch her, her showmanship. He just, oh, Aretha Franklin. I mean, he had me listening and seeing every artist that he felt um, I needed to be inspired by and learn mm. from. So I got to give a lot to the exposure that my dad did give me to a lot of artists and music. But that's a great way to teach a child without pushing them. Like mm -hmm. he's just, he's opening up your eyes and showing you all the variations of people who are doing it already without being like, all right, now you get on stage and tap dance yeah. and do this. So that was a great way. So then, you know, once you started getting into it and realizing, okay, I want to kind of do this. Did you yeah. like tap into like other people? How did you find someone to say, I need help like turning this into a career? Right. So my actually it was the first talent show that I ever did, a uh, neighborhood talent show. Um, I was uh, eight years old. Mm. I told my mom they still had a video. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was like the first time I, I sang not uh, outside of church, you know. Mm -hmm. And oh, God, what I was saying. Uh, there was, I was always singing Whitney new songs. Um, and I love her, you know, obviously. Um, yeah. So that talent show, a neighbor, my mother's friend was there and uh, she, her sons, two sons and a friend, they had a band, a little kid band at the time and of three boys. And at the end of the show, and, and I did my, my solo with no music and they had, a, the, you know, it was a guitarist, a penis and a singer. And at the end, the my mother and their mother came together, Kathy, and they talked and I remember, you know, we all met cause I hadn't, hadn't really known them. They lived on the other side of the neighborhood. And so after that, we formed a band. Oh wow. And the name of the band was called TriStar. And mm -hmm. it was me, Chris, Mike and Rod. And we were, <laughs> yeah, I was uh, eight, Chris was 10, Mike was 13 and Rod was 12, something like this. They're a little bit older, but we're all kids. And yeah. I mean, full, full, full band, Be uh, guitar, uh, um, piano, drums. Mike would play the drums. And then I would play <laughs> the 
me sometimes. But um, and then um, you know, I we all and Chris sang and then I sang. So we started doing all these shows everywhere. We just did shows. I mean, I was literally working with them on the weekends. We were booked everywhere. Really? And, uh, Wait. So you were you telling me that you're eight, between the ages of eight and twelve, and you're yeah. being booked <laughs> to yeah. perform. Wow. We, weekend so we would rehearse i remember after school we would rehearse like two or three times a week and get our uh, show together and uh, so chris had um and mike and they had a, a great like kind of studio set up in the in their basement so that we can all uh practice and it was fun you know and so yeah on friday nights not too late but we and saturdays and sundays we did all kinds of events we did charities we did um all kinds of kids, you know, when, when there was uh, kids events, meaning like um, festivals or certain things like that. We did the state fair. We did um, literally like dinner um, events. Yeah. I started making money doing this. So at one of the uh, state fair shows I did, um, I sang uh, with Chris and then I, I did a solo song. And the woman at the show who put that show on Cynthia Gertie, she was there. She saw me, and uh, the next day she called my mother, and that started the uh, my first manager, who was also a mentor as well. Wow. That's great. Cynthia, yeah, I had you know I she's she taught me everything. She hmm. put me in the studio every. I mean, I was all that studio studying. I started singing background. She taught me about harmonies. She taught me how to present myself as a as a you know. A classy female artist, you know, learning the bit. She also taught me about the business, what to expect. And mm -hmm. I mean, I was young learning this, you know. Um, she also exposed me to um, other artists, also taught me how to uh, uh, song, better songwriting. Um, I mean, I was, she had me in the studio like boot camp, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And um, and so what had and that's kind of led to uh, she you know I started doing a lot of different shows started recording in the studio people started hearing the recordings and then it led me to another agent and then I got my first record deal through mm -hmm. Cynthia through Bill the agent um, my very first record deal um, with Electra when I was thirteen so yeah thirteen years old and you are your own assigned artist how yeah. I mean that had to be I mean exciting but at the same time intimidating yeah. to be able to put out music like like through all that preparation how did you get to the stages of where you were like ready and what kind of like prepared you to say all right i'm ready to put music out now um you know i had been i had literally been recording and performing since i was eight right mm. and so that would say you know five years of constant i mean i had a very full music career doing background sessions doing shows uh, recording my own records, uh, not only just as for possible release, but also just learning too. So it was kind of as a as a child, and it's something I wanted to do. I told my parents this is what I want to do, and my mm -hmm. mom and dad were like, "Okay, um, <laughs> you know." Well, but they were very there. They were there every step of the way. And Cynthia is like a second mother to me, still is, you know. So my mother also entrusted in her to be there as well around her child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and so she really took care. She nurtured me, but she protected me, but she also was doing business and making sure that everything was cool. And we trusted her and she was an amazing, amazing person and, and, and everything. Um, so I just, it was kind of what I knew. And by the time I got the first deal, you know, it was just what I knew. You know what I mean? I've done it yeah. for the last years. It was like nothing. I wasn't nervous. It's just like, I was such a showbiz kid now. You know what I mean? But I also had a strong family foundation. Um, mm -hmm. So I was still able to be the kid and have fun with my sisters and friends. And my parents were uh, actually very protective too because they wanted to sign TriStar. We want we had we had an offer to sign, I think it was Atlantic. I'm not sure the, the label, but I know it was a major label when I was when I was just like 10 and they wow. were really yeah, and I remember that. I remember my father and mother said no, and their parents said no. We were too young, and they we didn't do it. So I mean, my parents mm -hmm. knew she, she's too young right now. But at thirteen, yeah. they kind of felt like okay, she's she's getting to that age. Yeah, we have Cynthia here too. We have Bill here. Terry is always you know 
performing and doing stuff. So, you know, we're, she can do this, you know. So, what, yeah. would, what advice would you give a parent who has a child who's just like yourself, who's as talented and thinking about putting them in the industry or, you know, getting them mentorship to hopefully get to that point? Um, what advice would you give them going into it? Gosh, um, <clears throat> number one, really stay in tune and listen to your child. Mm -hmm. uh, to your children um, and be really tuned in because my parents were always communicating with me about what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it as far as how I was feeling. Um, not, of course, not business necessarily because I'm a kid. I don't know, like, right. oh, let's do contracts, and, you know, <laughs> but it was really like I was telling my parents when they and they continuously asked me every step of the way. Do you want to do this? How do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. um, how to doing this right, doing this part here. How does that make you feel? Do you feel, you know, very specific questions. And I just really felt like sometimes as a kid, I was like, it's a lot of questions, guys. Yeah. But my parents wanted to be very, very clear and sure that I was mature enough, at, even at that age, to take on a music career, where my abilities were, where my gifts were. Um, I would do, I would go out of town with Cynthia, who was like my mom and mentor for like one, you know, one night in the beginning, I'd come back or, you know, go to another city and record. And then it was first thing, how, how did you feel? Did mm -hmm. you ever feel lonely? Did you ever feel this? Did you ever see that? You know, they would just constantly ask me questions and I was always clear with them with how my experience was going. Number two, number two, a lot of parents like, my parents didn't really know the business. Yeah. Right? And, um, you know, they're very smart people, but the music business is a whole other thing, you know. Piece, you know yeah. <laughs> and it, you know, it wasn't until Cynthia and Bill Waller, who were very long time industry, you know, managing artists, and Bill reps, repped a lot of people. Bill was who actually introduced me, my agent at that time, to the labels. Um, so they knew the ropes and the business and my parents really made sure that they trusted them. They, they made sure to kind of suss them out and they were like family to us. And mm. so they were, they kind of let me, uh, be handled by them, but still my mom was still like, wait a minute. I'm right, like, right, right. Get behind you. <laughs> right. Every minute of the way. But her and Cindy are still best friends to this day. And she let, she knew, okay. I got, we're going to, my, both my mom and dad, they let, they, you know, they allowed biz, industry business, music industry folks that know the business to not only handle me as an artist, but also, you know, we had a very good personal relationship as well. So it wasn't just the business part. It was like, okay, I need to make sure that these people, I can trust them with my kid, my, my yeah. child, and that they'll take care of her. And this is not just about money and blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then so eventually, when there was the big decision making, it was all for them. And really, my parents, my mother and father, would listen to them, and and they would be they would allow them to guide the business decisions. So mm -hmm. I would say to parents, really have somebody there, no matter what it takes. You got to find that, you know, unless you're coming from the business. There are some parents right. that you know, were no. singers artists and know like you know would know what to do or pretty much to say i would say still get somebody though because the business yeah. is constantly changing but i would definitely have someone that you trust that has experience that can help guide you with your child because ultimately under if you're under 18 your child's under 18 you are the manager you're the one and, and you know that that controls everything and so it's kind of having someone consult you know right. in that you know don't try to do it by yourself because i've seen it happen a lot for parents that don't really understand things and you know they don't they don't know and so you know what i mean so that's the thing it's like having yeah. someone that when they're done that that you trust mm -hmm. that you trust and making that a vessel for your child you know because Within everything is not on youtube even if it is you still need to have someone who's been in the weeds of it <laughs> No, nothing, nothing of the experience of the business is on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, yeah. and I have to say this, with any child, you have to be very particular, guarded, and 
perfect, of course, you know, focused and, and making sure every, your, your child is protected. Um, especially though, for young girls, you mm -hmm. know? So there's one thing with the boys. Yes, of course you gotta watch your your boys for sure, of course. But of course, they're with little girls. You know, I was a, a, a female, a girl, and it's just a different type of oh, yeah. experience as well, being a young lady, um, opposed to the boys. I had friends, I had artists, uh, young uh, male friends that were singers and artists too. You know, our experiences were similar, but different. Children of children, yeah. doesn't matter if boy or girl, but there's there's a specific experience that comes with little girls. You gotta be. Yeah, I mean, as we've seen in, in most industries across the board where we hear stories time and time again of young girls yeah. in these situations. So it's definitely very crucial, especially parents being involved, not just relinquishing over everything to someone who's saying yeah. they're the ones who are experiencing the business. But Absolutely. I wanted to kind of shift gears into the songwriting aspect of your, your journey and your career. When you, as a singer, some people are not all singer songwriters. Yeah. As a songwriter, it's the storytelling part of it. Was that part of your navigation to that? Or you was kind of drawn to it because someone else influenced you to it? How did you decide you wanted to do the songwriting part of it? Yeah. You know, I started, uh, I, when I started singing, I started writing as a mm -hmm. kid. And um, I would write about everything. I'd look at the wall and write about the wall, you know. Um, I, I will be honest. I wouldn't say that it was always supported once I got into the biz professionally. Mm -hmm. That was a battle I had to really fight um, as a, a young female artist. Um, be, singing and trying to have a voice as a songwriter, I really had to really push, you know, through everything. But I will say my first album, I was able uh, to co-write uh, five songs on there. So being a young artist at the time, I was very grateful for that. Um, but yeah, it, it's 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 evolved to become even more important to me. Um, as I've matured, uh, life is, you know, there's different priorities now. Um, I, I feel like my voice has gotten much more mature and bigger. And I there's that need that I need to say and and certain things and express myself a certain way. Uh, to the world. So writing is, I would say, just as important as the singing. Whereas when I was younger, um, in the first uh, legs of my career, the singing was took more precedent where the songwriting, I loved it, but my the singing was, I would say, touched, was more important for me. But now yeah. it's evolved where it's equal. You know, as, as much as I love to sing, um, I love writing and there's a need to make sure that I, I say certain things and songs and I'm, and I'm, and also writing for other artists as well. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and you work with a, you know, a long list of them and I know you've done work with like Eric Bonet and a few others. What, what, what have you said in terms of like your style of writing and then I guess people who you work with that you try to find a mix and blend, especially with your background and exposure you've had with your, your father that you try to bring to a story or to a song? Um, you know, as an artist, I've even as a, a kid all the way till now, I've always really felt that I wanted to stay, um, I wanted to keep a certain value, meaning that, um, how do I say? I always felt like I have this voice and it, it comes from the church too. It's like, mm -hmm. I wanna make sure that I use this gift, this vessel, you know, the beautiful gift that God gave me to say something of value, right? Mm -hmm. um, also, image-wise and everything that comes with it, um, as much as I could, you know, uh, I'll put it this way. I've said a lot of no's mm -hmm. in my career uh, because this was speaking for me, you know? Mm -hmm. This was saying, mm-mm. That's gonna hurt people. That's not respectful enough. What are they saying? You know what I'm saying? I always yeah. like I always say, let this lead the way. I consult with this and say, what do you think? And, and if it, it doesn't feel comfortable or it feels like it's disrespecting mm -hmm. anyone or it's just not valuable, the message is not valuable enough, then I I I won't I won't do it. So as far as writing and as an artist and singing. I really try to make sure that I write, I would say at a certain class level, I, you know, I want to make it classy to people. I want to, if that makes sense, you know, I mean, I like to have fun and, and, you know, write lyrics and things that 
are fun, but I, you know, there's a certain bar, <laughs> a yeah. certain moral compass that I want to stay, you know, at. <laughs> uh, well, you tell me I, you have to do a song about twerking. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, they have been presented. <laughs> and this is like, oh, uh -uh, you know. Uh, well, you know, look, I, I appreciate all music, right? Yeah. I appreciate all artists, I really do, especially women. I just love her. I love everybody. Um, yeah. But for for myself and just what I feel comfortable doing and what I I feel my purpose is, it's really about that, right? It's mm. What genre do you feel like you lean more towards, though, in terms of the um, style of music? What genre do you lean towards? Oh gosh, um, yeah, I would say soul. Mm. Um, I would say soul, mm, R and B. Definitely. Okay. I mean, I just—I I would say just soul. I'm from okay. Detroit, so that says a lot. <laughs> you know, I've—I mean, I've recorded and written all kinds of genres. A uh, country, actually, as well. Uh, something newer that I, I started writing. Um, mm. But I was exposed to it through my dad a little bit as a kid. Um, uh, gospel, of course. Inspirational, of course. Um, but that's all soul too. I feel like that's all combined. Yeah. Some rock, uh, pop, pop is kind of, you know, kind of a, a general, um, you know, uh, kind of group. But um, I would say, yeah, I would say so. It's just kind of, it's, um, you know, Detroit church, the, you know, the realness of just, you know, just soul. That's me. So that's kind of what I definitely listen to, I'd say the most as a listener. Um, and then what I, what I, I feel like is really my wheelhouse as a writer and a singer. Because we were going to play a song that I thought sounded like the uh, the EM, EM, EM uh, kind of like that uh, sped up kind of track music, that kind of house version of it. Did you do a song? Have you done kind of that version of style of music at all? Oh, EDM? Yes. oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Um, well, the, the kind of house music I've done for many years. I grew up in Detroit, Chicago's next door, so we're very exposed. And and mm -hmm. I would say there's a lot of great uh, house producers and DJs from Detroit as well. But Chicago, definitely, you know, there are neighbors and they're, you know, they're the fathers of house and the mothers of house. Um, yeah. So, but when I approach house, it's it, it's soulful house. So that's the mm -hmm. kind of sound that I bring mm -hmm. to the genre. One thing I always loved about house, my cousin introduced me to when I was a kid. <laughs> She's a babysitter. So I'm like, what is that music? And she was just like, I'm gonna learn about this. Um, my cousin Tanya. <laughs> but, um, hey, House music is uplifting. That's what I always loved about it. The lyrics, uh, mm -hmm. it always brought people together. It was such a positive, it, it is such a positive I'd say, message genre on top of, you know, the sound. And, and so that's what really, that's what I love about House. But I do what you would call Soulful House. Yes. And listen, my husband <laughs> listened to Soulful House all day long. And I'd be like, can we turn the station, please? And, oh, really? But but it, but I, but I have been introduced to songs that I like. There's a song called Superman, Let It Rain. There's songs I hear and I'm like, oh, okay, I can get. Especially I love when they do like a remix of a gospel. They had a little gospel one all of a sudden. I'm in there praising the Lord and dancing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like house house is different genre. There's actually different branches of house. But yeah. soulful house is a large beloved. Uh, uh, branch of house music, so I love it. You, I, I, I mean, I love it all. I love pretty much. I can appreciate all house music as a house music artist as well. I do appreciate all. I just have focused and I'm drawn more to the soulful house aspect. Of so, house. so, if you were putting together an album today or just an EP, what I guess what style would you I guess blend together if you had to choose? Two, I was thinking, I'll give you two genres. What, what's two genres you mix together? Um, gosh, I say, I would say pop soul. Okay, pop soul. Okay. I can see that. I was, I, was just, I was just gonna say soul, like gritty soul, Detroit. Of I was gonna make it a, a, a Detroit soul, and that's it. No. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Pop, you know, I, I, I'd add pop because it's a it's broader as far as certain sounds. Yeah. You know, uh, instruments. That's why that's why I say that. But soul leads the way. Yeah. Soul so, leads and, the way. No so let's get into the the multi instrumentations parts of your your title here. So 
give, give the explanation to what that means and how does that fall into like the multitude of things that you do? <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, I wish I could play a lot of instruments, but I play <laughs> a little, but I do play the violin. Oh, wow. Now, did you just pick that up on your own? Because that doesn't seem like the corresponding thing as a singer. So yeah. how did the violin come into that? Yeah, I it was, I always, I consider my second voice, my violin. Um, I chose to play it, uh, but I, I started playing the violin, gosh, uh, third grade. And I studied Suzuki uh, mm. <laughs> years, all through my childhood, all teen years. And then I went to Interlochen actually and did really intensive studies with my violin at, at interlocking for maybe five years so i would spend time there and, and and do more study there so i love the violin and you know it's something i haven't incorporated uh into as into my music uh i've kind of followed more of the classical training and yeah and i've even written you know or composed um pieces and uh, for my violin, you know, violin pieces actually composed. Um, but I don't know, I, there's no but. I, I feel like it's just, it's one or the other. I, I play the violin on its own, but it's just, I haven't quite figured out how to, how to blend it. Because I, it's no excuse, right? Everybody keeps saying, you can't make an excuse, just do it. Um, <laughs> but that's something you haven't really seen though, when you think about it, like yeah. have a pop soul album where you just like playing the violin in between. <laughs> right. I think I'm, uh, as a singer, you know, the violin is here. Yeah. So it's kind of pulling it up and down. I thought about it at one point. I was like, I could, I could figure out how to kind of play it and pull it down. Pull it down. And, but I just, I, hey, I just got to do it instead of talking about it. it. And put it on Instagram. Like, you know, well, maybe not, because then you'll have everybody else trying to pop up being the pop soul guy. Yeah. Right so. You know, I wanted to add something. It's something you, you may not know, maybe. But all my sisters sing. And I have a sister. All of them sing. And one of my sisters, Leah, is a opera singer, professional opera singer. What? Yeah. So y'all really, y'all got in the blood, blood. Like, the blood, yes. blood, blood. <laughs> We're actually we're talking well, and then we have a, a cousin, a, a very close cousin, who's a, an amazing pianist. So we've been talking about doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited I'm about that. that. And she's amazing. Woo, my sister. You, but you, there's no, there's oh, no have, okay yeah, opera singer. What? what? Ooh, she, she is amazing. I mean, she's traveled all over the world. She's master degree. Like she's no joke. Yeah. I don't okay. Know. So we're gonna we've been talking about finally we've talked about it over the years uh doing something combining the two different sounds and having mm -hmm. doing a project so we're we're working we're starting to talk we're, we're gonna do it we're just we've had the conversation so we're gonna mm -hmm. in the future it'll be the combination of the two so i had to throw my sister in there <laughs> <laughs> i have a question so my my daughter she's actually um going to play the cello this year in school oh, she's in fifth grade really? Yes, I, look, I was surprised that she went with that. Um, but I'm excited. So, any advice for her? Because I know you played the violin, and that's the family. Oh, yes. I I love the cello. I can play it a little bit. When you learn how to play a string instrument, you mm -hmm. have an understanding of all of them. So, viola, uh, the bass, a, a mm -hmm. little bit. But I did learn a little bit of the cello. Look at me doing my my hand movements. Yeah, I can just right. <laughs> It's a, so, oh, but I would say cello uh, mm -hmm. in the orchestra. I, that was the one instrument I would go, oh man, I, I may have, I, maybe I should have picked, no, I love the violin, but <laughs> I was question like, maybe I should have picked the cello. Um, yeah. It's a wonderful instrument. It's beautiful. There's so much you can do with the cello. Mm. It's it's an amazing, I'm, I mean, it's in, in my opinion, other than the violin, it's like the most perfect instrument. So. <laughs> She, I, will, I will let her hear this after the show, but she loved the sound of it. So we're looking forward yeah. to it. Oh, there's so much she could do um, with it too. What if, you know, whatever she decides and how she uh, chooses to grow with this uh, amazing instrument. So man, I love, I love the cello. It's, it has like, um has like this bluesy yes. feel to it. Yeah. Yes. That's okay. It's so funny because I actually took her into the store because it's one thing of just hearing about the different instruments, yeah. but I actually took her to the store to feel it, to hear the sounds of all the instruments. Because if you're going to play this over and over again, you want to be sure that you like the sound of it. Yeah. And um, she started with the trumpet. And then, 
it, it went to the chimes and then it went to the flute and then when she, when she heard them all, she's like, oh mom, that I know I said I didn't like the cello. Yeah. I love that sound of the cello. Yeah. So. And you know, the instruments call us like, yes, they, it's because instruments really they're I mean, they're a vessel of the beauty of music and mm -hmm. they call on us, you know, and especially mm -hmm. as children, I would say I, I'm so excited to hear that. I love to hear when um, children are are gravitating and embracing an instrument um, and just tell her best advice is to play and keep playing as much as you can mm. um, and and it's a feeling like she'll feel like she want, wants to play so go with that feeling and you know as a kid I played the violin and my sister would play the flute and it used to be loud and all that and my parents were like all right y'all just do your thing so <laughs> I'll just tell you you'll get used to it <laughs> okay well, I always said no instrument called me because I tried to play the flute and I got lightheaded and I was like I'm done with this <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. This flute this not calling me. <laughs> so that just means that you like to listen to the flute. Yes, I'm definitely more in tune to hearing it and knowing that you know certain things sound good, but not playing it at all. But, yeah, but so, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to cut to quickly. I want to cut to a clip, and let's come back and ask her about. It. Okay, here we go. Run! Woo! I was like, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, that was so much fun. That whole experience. That was so David Cameron even... play, right? Yes, yeah, so much fun. The best, best time ever. Um, and you know that was my first time ever. On stage, after. really? That's surprising. Doing a play. Yeah. That it was, was such a. Yeah. Be the next thing you would have done, but go ahead. Oh yeah, right. But, oh, I mean, I actually ran. From that uh, opportunity, yeah. um, I didn't. I said, "I'm not doing this. That's crazy." I told David, uh, who's an awesome, uh, um, amazing, who really blessed me with changing my life. Really, um, I never wanted to act. Um, mm. I ran from it. Being in the music industry, there were opportunities, and I would. I, I sing. I let the actors act. Let the singers. Right, right. Sing wrong. I mean, there's so many different hybrids of singing, acting, and but I don't know. I just felt like, I think that it was this saying, uh -uh, we don't have time. We got to stay, you know. Um, but I met, uh, it was so many different pieces that brought that opportunity uh, to me, of course, God and and friends and, and just so many interesting situations. When something is meant to be, it's meant to be. You know? mm -hmm. And when I met Dave, we clicked. He is it's an artist too. It just all was meant to be. And I did not never I've never acted and but it just it just just worked like it just flowed in and it you know you just be, it, it was interesting because I kept questioning like ah oh, I don't know what I'm doing but really acting is being performance yeah, yeah. It's being and believing and trusting and you know David always says give yourself permission to be and once I said yes that's when it yeah. just all. Like, and that's been since. Now I'm acting, and I love it. And uh, I, my, I, I, it's 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 an amazing craft. Um, I love it. It's such a. Di it's like coming from the same vessel, but a different branch of the vessel. Mm -hmm. People. So yeah, <laughs> great time. And, and, and which is great to say to the acting part of your your illustrious career. And mm -hmm. that you know, I've I've seen you play a, a sergeant or a, a, in the the military, and I've seen oh, you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. And it was like such a sweet person. All of a sudden, just turns into just like ah. So with this, is go to show how you just can become and be in that moment. 
But like, yeah. do all of that, like once you got tapped by the bug, as they call it, you know, once you realize, okay, I guess I can put my hand in that. You know, what was like for you wanting to kind of leap into it and how much of it did you go in terms of like acting, coaching, or was it just opportunities just came about for you? Yeah, it. Uh, I once we finished the tour, I came back and I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue with the acting yet because I just wanted to, I had grown a whole new respect for it. I'll put it that mm-hmm. way. And I, I told myself, if you're gonna continue with the craft and, and, and developing as an actor, you have to 100% respect it and really mm-hmm. put your all into it. So no half, mm-hmm. you know what, you know what I'm saying? And I just needed to really make sure that I was ready to do that. And I knew all the advice I got and I just knew that it was gonna be a long track so you have to have patience. I'm coming in as a baby in yeah. the acting business. And it wasn't like I ha- wasn't like music where I had this innate knowing and, and the gift is so you know strong and bright my whole life. Uh, the acting crap, I was I didn't know you kind of don't know what it is that you have in you until you put the time in, until you develop okay. it. You know, so I jumped right into classes and trained with great people, great agent who's still been by my side. You know, she got me, I had like no experience just with the play, of course. Um, but she said, you know, I believe in you. We're going to, this going to be a, a track. We got, you know, we're going to get down and do this. And um, so I'm really excited about uh, the growth. And I'm actually um, on an amazing streaming series now. And we were just nominated for an Emmy. Yay! Um, we didn't take it home. But it's been such a great uh, experience. So it's called, a house, it's called A House Divided. Oh, House Divided. Yes, I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. That's all amazing. Black. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's on the platform All Black. And okay, yes. I love it. It's been so much fun. We're going, uh, season four, we, we have completed it. It comes out this fall. I'm thinking this fall, but it's coming. That's and great. Was, yeah, it's it's really been great uh, uh, living in the in uh, the care. I'm I play Eileen on it on the series and um, in the story. I like to say in the story. And uh, it's it's been awesome, really walking and and living in a character. In, in a world for for so long and just kind of living and growing with the character. So that's been really a, a dream as an actor, you know, to really step into a world and step into a role and and live for a long period of time, kind of go with the flow of life with the role. So it's been a great blessing being on the show. Thanks to Peter Wise and, and, and Dan, Dan, uh, Dan Garcia and All Black. And, you know, I'm just, I'm very grateful and it's great. just been an actor. It's a dream as an actor, you know? Yes, indeed, for sure. Now, with everything you've done, like, I mean, I'm assuming you still have goals that you want to achieve in your life. What would be some of the things you want to have happen for yourself? Oh, you know, honestly, for me, I really want to, and I should, I'm, it's it's me really needing to do this and, and just step forward. I want to create more, I want to give back more, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to create more of a platform uh, other than just creating uh, music and, and as an actor and producing. I've done a little producing as well, songwriting. More getting involved and really giving back um, and helping you know, either youth, uh, young artists. There's a lot of ideas I've been having. I just have to really put my foot forward and do it um, and let my heart, heart, heart lead with that. You know what I'm saying? Um, establish more, more of that these days. I feel like you know, we have so much accessibility to people now mm-hmm. and uh, so many ways that we can reach people uh, with technology these days, too. So there's no excuse for me not to. Um, but, yeah, that would that's something I really want to put focus in is, you know, just really giving back and establishing um, platforms. I mean, charity, I don't want to say charity, but like, you know, it's just uh, uh, inspiring Yes, others. <laughs> people, people, kids, youth, and all people. Just be more, uh, you know, taking the reins and and becoming more inspirational and changing and in our, our inspiring lives. I'll say, you know, uplifting people more, being there for people, um, being of of uh, service to people. So mm-hmm. that's what I really want to start. I have ideas. 
Um, but I just need to really do it, you know. So that's and, and you also and you also have to put your group together with your sister and your cousin. So there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> we, tried, we tried a few times and it was funny. I mean, it was cute at first, but it was like then we start arguing. <laughs> Not even immediately. <laughs> I remember one time I was like, my dad, we were like, dad, you're going to manage us. And he was like, all right, okay, cool. And then it lasted maybe a week because we were fighting so much. You know, I was like, I'm not going to sing it, that, that. And then, you know, I was bossy. And then, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but I just love how your dad is just a go with the flow. Like, all right, sure. All right. Because he probably was like, then this is not going past a week. So, sure. <laughs> well, you know, when you have four girls. Oh, wow. Yeah. Four girls that are all pretty close in age, and we're Dexter girls, so we come from the the Dexter lineage of strong women. Yeah, um, right. you no, know, my dad was just like, whatever, y'all, not whatever, but he would just go, okay, let y'all figure it out, let y'all <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> Come right. on, be the referee at the end of it all. Right. Yeah, mom. yeah, my mom was like, "I'll be, the, I'll, I'll be in over there, y'all. You know, y'all need exactly." Me. But that's oh, good because they would let you be creative. Because a lot of times parents are stifling you because they're like, "Shut up, get in the corner, don't talk." So they were letting yeah. you all to be expressive, you know, at the time. Absolutely. So that's great. Hey, I think I just learned with four girls with big personalities, uh, you know, next to women in Detroit. I think that. Um, you know, they kind of learn not to tune you out, but they kind of learn how to kind of, you know, this, uh, how do you say, just kind of like focus when, yeah. focus on things when it's needed. When it's needed. <laughs> you know what I'm when it sounded like them, like somebody needed to intervene because the, the emergency is going to be called, like the ambulance is going to be called. It's like, all right, we'll come in then. At that point, we'll let y'all figure it out. <laughs> exactly. I, I can only imagine what my parents, and my, well, what my father went through. But my dad's right. amazing. He's he's such an amazing man. I really, he really is. I, I just talked to him earlier today. So oh, look, I did. So look, yeah. I wanted to play on my other show up late with Shondell. We played games where I guess, and I thought this would be such a great thing to end the show with playing a game with you called Name This Television Theme Song. But you have to. I'm going to give you clues, and you have to sing the theme song to this. Okay. Oh what? Oh. <laughs> So sing the television theme song. Yes, I'm gonna give you clues to the show, and then you have to sing the theme song. Okay. Oh, I'm just I don't know the theme song, but I'll try. Well, listen, your your version of what you think the theme song would be. This is not okay, this, okay. This, trust me, it won't be that hard. Okay. Okay. Um. Um, these older ladies would hang out with each other, and they all lived in a home together. And Blanche and Rose and all oh, yeah. of them. I know this, it's one of my favorite shows that I can't. And see, you know how you ask somebody for something. You're like, what's the name of that? And, and now I can't. Okay, let me just make it up. Make it up. Um, make it up. Uh, uh, it started uh, with thank you. I'll, I'll give you a clue. It started with thank you uh, for being. Thank you for being a friend. Yeah, thank you for lying to them. Thank you for being a friend. See, look, <laughs> that's very Dexas modern day reboot version. So that's what we try to get reboot versions yeah, of. That's my favorite show. <laughs> All right, you know, okay. You know, when you're trying to think of something, you know how it is. Of course, like, of course, of course. Okay, okay. now let's now let's see if you can get this one. Because if you can't get this, we will get you kicked off of All Black. Okay. All right. Yeah. The main character was on. Uh, we was constantly saying, "Down on the hike." Oh, oh, and I did. I recorded that song. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Terry, Terry. I, I recorded it for a show, a TV show, a remake. Oh, my gosh, I did. But now I see I'm terrible when somebody, at, honestly, when somebody's like, okay, so, okay, that's all right. I'm going to help you out. It starts with just looking out the. Oh, wait. Just looking out the. <laughs> Keep going. Just looking out the window, watching the. Oh, see, I recorded that. I cannot. See, I'm not good when I put on the spot. Do one more. Do one more. Okay, so the, I'll give you the words, and then you remix it to your modern day version. Just looking out the window, watching the asphalt grow. Uh, just looking out the window, watching the asphalt grow. Um, hanging in the child line. Good times. Oh, easy, good. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Da, 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 
Hanukkah time. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, we'll, we'll let you off the hook with that one. What is that again? And definitely, <laughs> and the thing with me is songs. Really? Like, you know, okay. Songs, I know they're like, if you're like, sing this song with, what, with this artist, and I'm like, uh, I just get like free. I just, that's the way I am. So when you said that, I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You know what? Awesome because you gave me enough to be like, oh yeah, it clicks, and then it's like, okay, the freeze button is off, you know. So. <laughs> but see, I like the fact that you gave your own version of it because now we got the we got the the remix and our own exclusive Terry Dexter version of these songs. So that's what makes it even better. <laughs> you know what? Song, so like we we normally close out asking. Okay. Wait, Lisha. I, I gotta throw this really quick. I have sang a few theme songs. On TV. Have you? Oh, yeah. I know. That's what made me think of this game. Yeah, I've done <clears throat> two. Because I saw there was a theme song for the game. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking. Um, no, so so do this. So then sing your theme song that you sang. Then let's do that. Um, it was a uh, uh, It was more of like vocally, but it um oh the one and then uh I, it's one for nbc show that well it, it was on for a season but the one i it was more like vocal like fun you know i didn't really have words but it was like me with the vocals okay. and then um it was for the tina tina and tomorrow show tv show oh, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's like yeah. when you sing it it seems like it's almost like a ventriloquist because because it doesn't sound it's it's so beautiful and perfect it doesn't sound real. That's how amazing your voice is. That's like but, but that's you, you said Whitney Houston, you 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 love her songs, you love her. What is your favorite Whitney Houston song? And actually, don't even tell us, just sing it for us. Oh my god. <clears throat> Let me see. Singing, um what I've been missing always on the run. Mm. I've been looking for someone. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying <laughs> that voice is so impactful. <laughs> I love that song. It's like I think it was like her first single, I think, ever, you know. So I love Whitney. I mean, yeah, I love Whitney. Mm. Yeah. Well, we um, wanted to um, give you an opportunity to not only speak to your younger self, but to our youth that are out here watching who are, you know, looking into getting into this industry and, you know, to overall give them advice, you know, as, as if you were talking to your younger self, what would you say? I would say, trust your gifts. Um, allow the allow your gifts to lead the way for you. Um, and which means, no matter what anybody tells you, uh, no matter you know how other people feel, it's how you feel, how you connect, and how and 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 you know just just simple just trust your gift and let that lead the way for you because you know i feel like especially in, in this day and age a lot of people have opinions and, and a lot of people want to tell you how you should do something when you should do something mm -hmm. but really just tune all that out and and go with whatever gifts that whatever gifts you have inside and you know what they are too you know what those gifts are um and so allow your gifts to lead the way for you and trust them a hundred percent. That's great. That is so great. And we thank you so much. I mean, I feel like I could have talked for more hours and hours and hours because I feel like we just tapped the surface in terms of everything you've done in your career. But we are so thankful that you've shared your time with us today. And when you and your sister kind of get it together and what a <laughs> <laughs> that is not. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. You ladies are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Everybody. you. Thank you. Thank you all. If you want to follow Terry, make sure you follow her at, at Terry Dexter on Instagram. She's on social media. Um, is there any other places you want anybody to find you? What you got coming up to as well? Um, no, just uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I do have some projects coming up. Uh, 
uh, House Divided season four, of course, is coming. And then I have a, a record with uh, Dexter Wanzell that's mm -hmm. coming out. We shot a video, music video that's coming with that. It's beautiful. And so that'll be out in the next couple months. Mm. Um, so that's coming. And then I have uh, uh, some a uh, couple more records, uh, house genre records coming out. Possibly working on something else. I can't really say too much. Okay. But it'll be my, it's, you know, my solo, my again, you know, in, in the soul yes. world genre. So I'll mm -hmm. be able to say once it becomes a little bit more developed, then I'll be able mm -hmm. to actually talk about it more. But as of now, Dexter Wanzell feature and Roy Davis and Frankie Feliciano, we have uh, new records coming as well. And oh, and yeah. Yeah. And we, can't, we can't wait to have you back on so you can talk about those upcoming projects when you're able to do so. But I you know, wish we had the round of call sound effects. But thank you so much, Terry, for coming on and sharing your journey with us. We appreciate you so much. Yes. Don't go anywhere. Stay backstage and we will be right back with you. So thank you um, for joining you. us on, on the show today. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching and coming on and watching uh, Terry's journey. If you want to inspire someone or you feel like you've been an inspiration to someone or you know someone who has, make sure you email us at inspire at anonymous at gmail.com. Um, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn at inspire by anonymous is all right here. If you want to support the show, we do this as a way to support our youth and those who want to be inspired by others. So if you want to support the show, please do so by donating at um, dollar sign Kiana Ted. It was right there below. But we want to thank our special guest, Terry Dexter, for coming on and being such an inspiration to ourselves and our youth and any those, anyone who would like to be inspired. But until then, be blessed. And then we also have shirts on themselves, too. So if you want to get those, make sure you follow out the page, too. But until then, you all be blessed. And remember that we inspire together. <laughs>